like uh, in my brain. Um, okay, so thank you guys so much for coming to my talk today as part of the career brain class in life and new business, which is wonderful. Um, so the topic of my talk today is the writer as observer. So we talked a little bit about genre, we talked about audience, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the concrete skills that you might not think of when you're thinking of a short story, right? You might think of things like uh, setting character, you know, plot, things like that. But I think that the skill of observation and noticing the world around you is critical to all of these things. And so we're going to do some activities that are trained to hone your powers of observation. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what makes a good description, what makes a memorable description and how we can create memorable descriptions in our life. Um, so part of the uh, inspiration for this talk was a writer whom I really love called Amos Bobos. Has anybody ever heard of him by any chance or read any of his books? So I really recommend her. I think he's a wonderful writer. Um, in particular, his book, A Tale of Love and Darkness, which is his autobiography. I think he's really phenomenal. I don't read a lot of autobiography, but um, I thought this book was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and one of the things that really struck me about this book was the way that he was able to use a small description to absolutely capture the essence of a person. Um, so just, I, I brought some examples of his writing. So for instance, he talks about a character who walked as though he found his body a tiresome burden, as though he was forced to drag it around with him from place to place against his will like a man carrying a heavy bundle that was gradually going undone. There's another description I like where he talks about a character who wore the washes, which are like you put over your shoes in the ice, um, that looked like twin black warships. And then my favorite description of his is he talks about a man swaying in the half like three or four separate shadows. And every time this character recurs in the book. He talks about him as the man with three or four shadows. I just thought that was such an incredible description. And even now, years and years after I read that book, I still remember the man with three or four shadows. Um, from which book is this? This is from A Tale of Love and Darkness. This is from his autobiography. So he's describing one of his neighbors. Um, so, in sort of in the same vein, I want us to do a short activity to begin. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys to think of your hometown, picture mm -hmm. it in your head, and just make a list of things that come to your mind when you think of your hometown. So I'm not thinking about like landmarks or things that you might recommend to a tourist, like, oh, you know, Paris, the Eiffel Tower. I want things that, things that you know because you're from there, things that make you smile. So maybe it's uh, a street that has a funny name. You know, maybe it's the dinner that your parents make whenever you come home. Um, maybe it's uh, a beautiful garden that you would walk past um, on your way home from school. Thank you. Um, you know, maybe it's the way people talk a certain way um, that they do there. Maybe it's a strange tree. It could be anything, you know, large, small, but I want it to be something that's not so obvious. Mm -hmm. um, so think about sound, think about textures, tastes, smells, okay? Yeah. So let's just take a couple minutes, just write down some things, um, you know, uh, and then uh, we'll talk about it in a few minutes, okay?
So let's maybe finish up the, the bullet point that you're on. Does anybody want to share one or maybe more than one of their, their sort of memories of their hometown, their descriptions? Places in Bishkek are around the courtyard of the um, residential apartments, mm -hmm. and usually it's located in the districts, like metro districts. Mm -hmm. And also, like lots of mini shops, mini markets all around Bishkek. Before uh, we called it Pika, mm -hmm. but today, I mean, all of them, um, um, I think, called like um, just pavilions or something like that. Mm -hmm. And also, um, one of the features of my um, town is that um, we have like the names of the bus stops. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Pitachok is like, the name um, in the, the first micro district. Mm -hmm. It's also the name of the uh, bus stops. Uh -huh. And also we have like Politiach, Manas, and the bus stops are given, um, like it depends on the place where it's located. Mm -hmm. Usually like the closest building. Okay, so they name after the buildings yeah. as opposed to sort of... Yeah, like Palitiak, Manas, Philharmonia, like okay. this kind of bus stops. Okay, cool. So, Ajumal was describing a lot of things. I know, I'm, yeah, I'm going yeah. to talk about Ajumal. Oh, yeah. um, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, was talking about a lot of things that sort of gave it an emotional feeling of warmth. And Adair was sort of looking at linguistic aspects of her city and sound aspects, which is sort of interesting. Does anybody else want to share theirs? Yeah. <coughs> Can you introduce yourself? Okay. My name is Akdan. I am from my city department, Kashmir. Mm -hmm. I'm from Jalabad. Mm -hmm. uh, night, blazing lights, waiting red, yellow, purple, coming from ads inside the buildings and from the cars, bulbs, cars label, lights reflected on the white asphalt, sounds of transport moving and stopping, moving and stopping, and the sound of motors buzzing and silencing again and again. This is very sort of impressionistic. Yeah, you can really see it. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's sort of like a painting, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share theirs? Yeah, please. Chris. My name is Marcel, so I'm from Jalaba, but not from Kurdistan. Jalaba, Jalaba, Jalaba. So when you uh, when you asked me to write down about my hometown, so what I remember is that my school days and and. Itself and uh, my friends there, and my childhood memories, and uh, my yard at home. Mm -hmm. And there's a garden we used to go a lot, uh, Amishani Garden, it's, not, it's a historical garden. And, I, and also, my hometown is um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's popular by the name of Always Spring. So Always Spring? Yeah, Always Spring. So. Uh, yeah, I like that. Now, what does the garden look like you were describing? Um, it's a historical garden, uh -huh. and there are um, people usually go into uh, the New Year, mm -hmm. and they stay the New Year there, and there are some shops there, and people like they just go and hang out there. So. Okay, it's just a nice garden. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? Yeah, I know. So, um, I'm a senior, Haidan. My hometown is Osh. Uh, it's a place where you're day starts with the fresh smell of petrichor, uh, the earthy scent from the soil and singing of birds and, uh, and the smell of the fresh, fresh sour cream. Okay, interesting. Hi, Vinny yeah. Mosh. Yeah. You also? <laughs> this yeah. feeling uh, yeah. when you wake up in the morning is quite different. <laughs> and you can feel it only if you're wearing Mosh. Really? <laughs> um, so, so you agree? Do you, do yeah. You, 
Yeah. You recognize that description. Very cool. You use this very interesting word, petrichor. Can you explain to the group what that means? Yeah, petrichor is the uh, earthy scent of soil after rain, for yeah. example, mm -hmm. or after people water the ground. Mm -hmm. This uh, <laughs> that's called petrichor. Why uh, does it like specifically happen in Oz? Because uh, as we're like close with the culture to Uzbek people, mm -hmm. uh, many people if they live in um, like houses, mm -hmm. not apartments, they wake up early in the morning, like mm -hmm. six o'clock, and then they sweep the uh, street, mm -hmm. and then every everybody smells the petrichor like uh, in the morning. That's why I described it. Okay, as interesting. As right, so you had a lot of sort of smell descriptions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. I think that these were all really interesting descriptions, and then so I did it to my hometown is San Diego, which is right by the ocean in California. So when I think of San Diego, I think of the smell of salt in the air and how, it, by the strength of the smell, you can tell how close you are to the ocean. Um, and I think about how the salt in the air also caused the, like metal to age quickly. So for instance, the knobs of doors, things like that, they would age very quickly. Um, I thought about the feeling of sand on your skin from after going to the beach. You know, even after you've like washed a bunch of times, you can still feel it. Um, I thought about the smell of, of wildfires because there, are, it's a desert. There are a lot of wildfires, and uh, actually, uh, recently the uh, uh, air pollution here has been quite bad. And I remember the first time when I stepped out, I thought that there was a fire <laughs> because of the smell. Uh, but so true. <laughs> so true. But um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for sharing, and uh, for those of you who didn't share yet, there will be another activity, so <laughs> you'll be a bit um, later. Um, so I have here some examples of weak descriptions, poor descriptions of place. Uh, so you all gave like very specific descriptions that was really easy to to uh, feel and uh, imagine and see and smell uh, the places that you were describing because you knew them really well. Um, Let's look at some like not great descriptions and talk about why they're not great. And what, how do we change a, a weak description to a strong description? So it was an average town. The mountain was tall. Mishkek is a nice city. Moscow is cold in the winter. Why? Why do you think that these are weak descriptions? What could be improved about them? What is that? Uh, it doesn't give us. Uh, we can't um, feel. Yeah, we can't really feel it, right? If you say it's an average town, like what does that what does that really mean, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And also it's about the adjectives. These adjectives are like usually like they are used a lot by everyone. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make it like something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So we have to use some adjectives which are attract which are attracting or maybe which is uh, which are spatial in their own way. So mm -hmm. not like these these words are usually usual words so, which are used by people a lot. Exactly. So you, if you say Moscow is cold in the winter, right, there are a lot of ways to describe that in a new and sort of exciting way that makes you able to really feel the feeling of cold. Whereas if, if you just say it's cold in the winter, that's not really exciting. That's not really memorable. And also, people kind of know that already, right? So it's, it's, um, it's not a great description because it's not really adding, adding anything new. Any other sort of comments on these descriptions? Yeah, that's right. Um, for example, Bishkek is a nice city. I just like ask myself, what makes a city just like a nice place? Yeah, exactly. Because, for example, uh, I'm from Bishkek as well, and when I died, uh, I started just like talking about your description of Bishkek, I really understood that, uh, that because we were raised in the different parts of town, mm -hmm. I would uh, use completely just like different notions. and. Uh, even uh, for me, uh, saying Bishkek is a nice city and I would describe this, what uh, this niceness, it will be a completely different uh, concept of nice for I die. Exactly, yeah. So these words like nice, average, normal, they don't really tell us anything. And also, as you say, every person has a different idea of what that means. So if you describe it in a more concrete way, or if you look at one specific aspect, it's going to be a lot stronger. Um, rather than if you just use these very big words. Did you have something else you wanted to add? Um, I think I just want to add that point. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, and that's it's it, it so general. It's very general. It's yeah. very general, like, 
you cannot get what what you mean exactly by it. It's mm -hmm. cold and winter. Like, what is what is special about it? Like, everywhere is cold and winter. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, if someone or place wasn't cold and winter, that's probably more notable than if it is yeah. cold and winter, right? Because um, in the Polar Mountains, do you think the mountains are like tall? Yeah, by <laughs> definition, right? And that's what it's yeah, called. It's, the, it's yeah. obvious. Yeah. Um, and then one thing that I liked about Ayanda's description was that she said, in the morning, this is what OSHA's like. So she was taking a really small snapshot. So what that sort of captures is that places are dynamic, right? They're different in the morning than they are in the evening. Mm -hmm. They're different at, uh, at one place than they are at another place. And these descriptions, like Bishkek is a nice city, it's really flat. And you don't get a sense of how much this place changes, how different it is in different places. Um, all right. So I think that you guys did a, a really good job. And I think that you sort of uh, got the idea, which is that when you push yourself to go beyond the obvious, beyond the the flat, you get much more interesting descriptions. Um, I noticed that a lot of you were sort of listing a lot of things, and so you were sort of pushing yourself to keep going and keep going. And I think that that's what a writer needs to do. Uh, yeah, did you have a question? I'm, I'm sorry, maybe you just add uh, until it's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when you see these kind of like uh, descriptions, uh, what came to my mind is that uh, just imagine it was like restaurants or whatever business it is, like it, each business has its own uh, motto, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, and it should be really specific and unique about uh, that place, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's the same with these descriptions. If the description is really weak and flat, if we cannot feel anything and we can't think of like good image when people say that, mm -hmm. then this motto wouldn't work for that activity, for example, yeah. right? So you're a BA major, it's very clear. So <laughs> I'm <I'm> concentrating <laughs> on my major. <laughs> but, yeah, but I think that that's absolutely right, right? Um, you, need to, you need to be specific, you need to be memorable, uh, because otherwise there's a market, there's a huge range of things that people can be reading, and why not read something that's much more interesting and specific? Um, okay, so... Um, let's do another activity. So we were talking about setting and the importance of specificity for setting. Let's try it now with a person, with a character description. So similarly, I want you to think about a person that you know very well. It could be a parent, a sibling, a really close friend, um, a significant other. Um, and just think about you know, what qualities you think of when you think about that person. You know? What makes you smile when you think about them? What makes you annoyed? What things that annoy you, even though they're small things. Um, uh, what does their laugh sound like? What does their sneeze sound like? Um, what do they sound like when they sing? Do they like to sing? Um, what kind of clothes do they wear? Do they wear different clothes when they know they're not going to go outside for the day? Or do they wear, do they sort of dress up no matter what? Um, is there a word or a phrase that they use a lot? Um, and maybe do they, they, do they notice it or not? These parts of things. So let's take just a few minutes um, to think about this, and then we're going to sort of go around again and see, see what you guys cooked up.
spot here and then we'll come back to that. Alright, does anybody want to share what they wrote for this exercise? Maybe someone can do the channel last time? Sometimes very hard to describe a person, but a significant other is really very good description. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so uh, uh, he's an observer, and he enjoys absorbing every piece of information that he receives. Either it's a particular way of your eyesight or your gesture. Um, whenever uh, he looks at you, you will understand that he is almost scanning, but it's not like stalker. And uh, at the same, uh, and at the same time, he started trying to fix the best of you. And you can understand it by the shine in his eyes mm -hmm. uh, when he sees something that really uh, in, uh, make him enjoy. Uh, his eyes that are usually just like uh, cold and black, and you can think that he's unfriendly. Start shining like a coal uh, in the winter. And yeah, he's like uh, in the winter side and. Um, and uh, as a person who always observing and looking at the people, he also trying to leave small hints of his personality in the way of how he looks and behaves. And as I said before, it's either eyes or the way of how he dresses and uh, of his handwriting. And then I finished. Okay. So you were sort of looking at this one really important quality in the person you were writing about and how this manifests in all these different ways and their physical appearance and their handwriting, which is really interesting. So I really like that, that you were sort of guiding or following this, this one trait into all these different directions. That was very cool. Anybody else? Um, so I wrote something. Um, my name is Shafat, uh -huh. and I'm a junior of ICP. Um, so it says, a light smile on her face and the fall and curly hair on her shoulders. She was shaking when she asked my name. At the time, she was wearing a black sweatshirt with little shiny stars adding to her rather smile. Okay, so you were sort of on um, the physical appearance of this person. Can I ask who it was? <laughs> 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 no, it's not. No. It was the first time. First question. First question. Okay, first question. Okay, first question. Okay, first question. Like, no, no, I just think, if, if you say the French, I was like... <laughs> Come oh. on, okay. okay. We understood. Okay, okay. Uh, so thank you. So you were doing sort of small descriptions of the physical appearance. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Oh, wait. I think, I think Adi can Okay. Because she hasn't shared yet. No. Yeah. Hello, I'm Adia. I'm NJ. I'm from Turkey. <laughs> and I wrote about my high school friend. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she has a really unique voice, but also she didn't like her voice. When she started to speak, you wonder what she is going to say, uh, not because of the subject, because of the tone of her voice. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes you more concentrated, but she didn't like it because it's different from others also. Mm -hmm. What made her voice unique was it? It's like different. It's like different. More, more harmful. Um, like I don't know like, uh, how to tell, but like it's, it's like rough, a rough voice. No, no, it's soft like voice. Soft, soft voice. Okay. Uh, the first is like we met with her voice, but most of people like we don't like your voice. Really? <laughs> don't speak too much. <laughs> That's why she didn't like it. Uh, but it's, I think it's really, it feels you like more uh, close to her. Uh, interesting. Okay, thank you. So you again, you were sort of focusing on this one thing and how they, they feel about it versus how you feel about it. So the sort of emotional reactions to one feature of a person. Anybody else? We had some hands. I don't know, maybe? Uh, the person, uh, the most important person that uh, stays in my heart is my mother. 
And when I think about her, in my eyes, uh, ears comes uh, uh, tender music of her voice. His, uh, her smile uh, can uh, hit uh, everyone's heart in our world. Yeah, could you repeat the last sentence? Uh, her smile uh, can hit everyone's uh, heart. I think what everyone's ah, heart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and why is that? Can uh, you say a little bit more? Uh, uh, maybe I think uh, 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 when I think about my mother, mm -hmm. maybe I feel something uh, sacred. Secret? No, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's why maybe uh, only good uh, thoughts come to my mind. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, Nisima, did you share? No, I didn't. No, can I ask you to share? Yeah, sure. Okay. I wrote about family now, though. Okay. okay. You look at him and he always smiles. His dimples are so deep, different, so breathtaking. When he laughs, his laugh is much more funnier than what he was actually laughing at. His black hair is just giving his brown eyes the whole complete image of how the ideal human being should be, at least for me. When he talks, it seems like somebody is chasing him, so fast, without really think. I get mad when he gets mad. And yeah, coming back to the dimples, I would agree to be very there. <laughs> I definitely know people whose laugh is funnier than the joke they're telling, so I could definitely, I could definitely relate to that one. Did anybody else want to share? More so did you have <laughs> So I had a job with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, he's a um, traveling lover, a kind person, and having a kind personality. You would always find him smiling. One can clearly see how kind uh, is he. Anywhere in the world, I feel his presence, no matter how far I am. The most dearest to me, uh, who always supported me, and the biggest feeling is being with him. When you say he's kind, can you think of like one specific memory where he did a mm -hmm. kind thing? Like what do you what do you think? Why he is always supportive uh -huh. in some difficult times, uh -huh. maybe in um, maybe in some personal uh, maybe in some personal issues like having problems, mm -hmm. with academic problems, or maybe some personal other problems, and he was always there to advise or to help in, in any way. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody else or shall we keep going? Yeah. Okay. We're every Saturday. This is about the book club. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just <laughs> His sentence is stretching out every single word. But he can see significant, significant. He liked to talk and talk passionately, sometimes losing the course and diving into quite unrelated topics, gesticulating with his hands just like a madman, and how his face contorts when he says the word sexy. But when it was time for others to speak, he would listen, he would listen briefly in the beginning, then his thought flies would focus on one spot, and then he would disappear from the conversation. So I think this is the best for Christian Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know him, and I can totally, I can totally see yeah. it. Yeah, description. <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's totally <laughs> like him. So thank you guys. So um, those were like very lively descriptions, and you know, that you could really picture the person or hear the person. Um, that you guys were describing. So those, are, those are really good. Um, let's look again at some weak descriptions and talk about why they're not great. So the old man had gray hair and wrinkles. The woman was beautiful. The young, tall, thin, black-haired, brown-eyed boy walked down the street. What is the matter with these descriptions? What is wrong with these descriptions? How can we make them better? Uh, for instance, in the, uh, in the second part, uh, the woman was beautiful and there is, uh, here doesn't say it's about uh, what makes her beauty. beauty. Right, so first of all, this phrase beautiful is very subjective and very broad, right? So we could be a lot more specific. Another thing that I would add is, um, I think a lot of writers uh, just describe female characters in terms of their 
beauty or their appearance. And I think that there's a lot more that can be said of any character, including female characters. Um, any other things that you guys want to add? The old man is old without pointing out that he has gray hair and wrinkles. Right, we can probably assume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, any, anything else? What about the last one? Uh, Paloma has a lot of questions. The last one, uh, it is like, too many of the injectors like one each other. Yeah, it's like a man. Young, tall, tense, and dark hair. It's like, you know, a list of. You're confused which, how to imagine him. First, his, his brown eye. So he's black hair and he can be Yeah, like describes the yeah. person who he's searching <laughs> for. Like this and this. <laughs> like this the pictures, yeah. Well, you brought this boy. For me, it seems to, uh, the third question, that sentence, sorry, it seems that you're learning English. You're just saying, <laughs> from your <laughs> adjectives. <laughs> I could definitely see that. Yeah, you're really good confused with it. For example, if you really want to imagine the person, okay, you imagine that you're young and then tall and then right. black hair and then ten, it's like, I don't know, you know, you kind of mix someone like, with, with all this difficult uh, objective stuff. Yeah, so I think that this is a case where someone knows that they want to describe a character, mm -hmm. but they don't know the difference between a description and a memorable description, right? Mm -hmm. So what I what I liked about a lot of yours is that with you know one sentence, you know that you can get a really clear uh, uh, view of the person, right? So like when Nasiba was talking about the person who whose laugh was funnier than their joke, like that's memorable and that's that's like relatable. I can totally picture a person like that. I know plenty of people like that, um, but. You know, young, tall, thin, black hair, brown eyed. This is a ton of descriptions, and yet none of them are particularly interesting. Whereas, if the author of the sentence, me, <laughs> had, had picked just one of those things, maybe, and just described it in a more interesting way, I think it would actually be uh, a much more interesting picture. So, um, the point that I want to make here is that it's not about including every detail possible, maybe just picking one, but really exploring that and really sort of seeing how can I phrase this in an interesting way, how can I make an interesting comparison, it's going to actually give you a much better description than if you try to make like a police sketch of the person, every little quality, but none of them were really that interesting. Um, so one other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is um, a writer named Say Shonigal. Has anybody heard of her before? So Sei Shonigo was a Japanese writer who lived around the year 1000 in uh, Heian, which is now Kyoto, which was the capital of Japan at that time. And she was um, a noble woman, and she also loved to write. And what a lot of what she wrote are lists of things. So she would basically uh, give herself a quality and list things that related to that quality. Lots of mm -hmm. examples of this in her writing. So, the book that she's most famous for is called The Pillow Book, which she wrote in the year 1002. So she made a list of things that make one's heart beat faster. So she writes, sparrows feeding their youth, to pass a place where babies are playing, to sleep in a room uh, where some fine incense has been burnt, to notice that when one's elegant Chinese mirror has become a little cloudy, to see a gentleman stop his carriage before one's gate and instruct his attendants to announce his arrival. And then there's another one that I want to share. Elegant things. A white coat worn over a violet waistcoat. Duck eggs. Wisteria blossoms. Kind of flower. Plum blossoms covered with snow. A pretty child eating strawberries. And she wrote all of these lists and lists and lists of things. Uh, awkward things, disconcerting things, things that give a clean feeling, things that one is in a hurry to see or hear, rare things, on and on and on, lists of lists. Um, and what I think is really special about her writing is that she's able to, she's really a master of emotional observation, right? So before we were doing a lot of sort of physical descriptions, um, of sights, of smells, um, and here she's really observing what makes one happy? What makes one feel this really particular way? And really going for very
very specific images, like a white coat worn over a purple dress. It's really, really specific. Um, so I think that um, another aspect of observation that you guys might think about as you are um, trying to uh, you know, practice your own writing is the emotional aspect of observation and how we can connect the physical world to the emotional world. All right. Um, the last aspect of observation that I want to talk about is observing the beauty of language. So I would encourage all of you, if you don't do this already, to take notes, take notes of words that are new, uh, words that are beautiful, words that are, are funny, words that are strange. Um, uh, I don't care if it's in English, it could be in Russian, it could be in Tajik, Kyrgyz, you know, Spanish, I don't care. Um, and then to take note also of beautiful phrases or descriptions that you see in the books that you read, right? And think about why, why they're beautiful. What makes them appeal to you? What, what attracts them to you? And why you remember them, right? Um, I think that this is a really important habit and that it will make you a more mindful reader and it will make you read like a writer, right? Um, and then lastly, uh, when you go home, I would encourage all of you to keep a notebook how many of you guys keep a, keep a notebook? Yeah? Almost all of you. I, I, I know that you keep a notebook because I, I saw you with a notebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so please, please keep a notebook. Um, it's the best way to um, you know, keep your list of words that I was talking about, to write down descriptions, to write down phrases that come into your head, ideas that come into your head. And also, looking back on it, I think it will just sort of make you proud of your work, right? Make you happy, remind you of uh, you know, what, you've, what you've done, what you've seen, and what you've accomplished. Um, and then I wanted to think about some exercises that you guys could do to strengthen your skills of observation. So the first one is something that I did with a friend of mine, which I called here the same place seven times. Uh, which is where my friend challenged me to go to the same place every day for one week at a different time and find something new in that place that I'd never seen before. This is a park that was really close to my house, so I thought you know, that I wasn't going to be able to find anything. But every day I managed to see something new. Um, so this is, I think, a way of understanding, like we talked about before, the ways that places change over time, uh, you know, forcing yourself to keep looking and you know, look deeper and, and you know, maybe uh, think about the sounds, the smells, the things that maybe you don't notice when you're just walking through this place or walking by this place. Um, the next thing that you guys might think about is sound observation. So going to a place and just closing your eyes and rather than observing the sights, which is I think what people are most likely to think of when they think of a place, observing the sounds, and then the sounds beneath the sounds, and then the sounds beneath those sounds. So really pushing yourself to observe. Um, another one here is something that I call neighborhood tourist. So I think when we're, especially when we're going from our home to our school or home to work, it's very easy to just sort of not really focus on what's around us because, you know, it's just space that we have to go through, and it's not that interesting. But if you think about your neighborhood like a tourist would, and really observe it. Um, think about the little details on the houses. Think about what kinds of plants grow there. Maybe collect some of the plants uh, and put them in a notebook. Um, maybe wonder uh, why why do these buildings look the way they do? What is the history of this place? Um, and start researching. I think that this will also push your observation. And then the last one that I put on here I kind of called Marshalka Investigator. So it was inspired by a friend of mine who uh, lives in New York and who did this exercise where she would take the subway every day to work and while she was on the subway, she would choose one person in the subway and she would write a description of that person and she would imagine where they're coming from and where they're going and try to be as detailed as possible and try to see how she can use the, what they look like, what they sound like to imagine a whole world around that person. All right, so these are the things that I want to leave you with. I hope they're fun. I hope they're interesting. I invite you guys to do them in pairs or in groups. You can trade notes and, and you know, consider how different people observe different things. Uh, but for now, does anybody have any questions or comments?
Actually, I want you to do more trip in this field. Yeah. Just some work in this field. No. What I did yesterday when I, when I uh, drove trolley bus or mm -hmm. bus, you just, you just sit and you try to listen to the conversation mm -hmm. between other people. Yeah. So just with the strangers. <laughs> you just listen to them and then just write it down. It's an amazing experience. Yeah. I had a, a short it's story a teacher who. Uh, <laughs> One of our assignments was to write a short story based upon a conversation that we overheard. And we had to use the actual dialogue. Uh, we also had to write, a, we had to uh, provoke an argument in real life, and then uh, write a story about the argument that we had. Um, so yeah, I like that. I like that suggestion. Any other questions or comments? No. Well, if you guys do have any questions or anything, I'm, I'm always happy to. Uh, Talk to you guys. I will be obviously at the club, this club. Um, you can also email me at um, the email address is up there, or you can come to New York, two two nine, and I will be there, and I'll be happy to chat. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you have time, but.